Okay, in our video series of infectious medicine, in this video, we are going to talk about acute sinusitis treatment. We are going to discuss the presentation, the causes and management of acute sinusitis in detail. First of all, what is the acute sinusitis? Acute sinusitis is basically mucosal inflammation of paranasal sinuses and adjacent nasal cavity. And acute sinusitis is the one that lasts less than 4 weeks. If it is for more than 4 weeks, that is called as chronic sinusitis. Coming to the causes of acute sinusitis. In the causes of acute sinusitis, remember viral causes are the most common cause of acute sinusitis and they include rhinovirus, influenza virus and these days coronavirus. So viral causes are the most common cause of acute sinusitis. Most cases are actually viral. After that, bacteria can also cause acute sinusitis and they include strep pneumo, H influenza in 75% of the cases. After that, M catalysis is also common. So, usually most of these cases are the ones that get viral sinusitis. And there is usually a superimposed bacterial infection in these viral sinusitis cases. The classical scenario would be that a patient would come to you and that patient got flu last week but that flu was getting better, the patient was improving. But all of a sudden, there was worsening of the flu. The pain worsened, the flu worsened and the discharge became purulent. Initially, the discharge was watery but later on, the discharge was green colored, purulent, foul smelly discharge. So, there was the initially the patient had viral sinusitis and then later on there was bacterial super infection that is called as double worsening of symptoms patient got a sinusitis patient got flu patient was improving then patient's situation worsened double worsening scenario that is a classical presentation of bacterial sinusitis now remember these days instead of calling it acute sinusitis we call it rhinosinusitis because the symptoms of rhinitis and sinusitis are most commonly together Rhin symptoms of rhinitis include sneezing, rhinorrhea, discharge from the nose, post-nasal drip, loss of sense of smell, and nosmia. Symptoms of sinusitis include fever, facial pain, pain over the sinuses, headache. Headache of acute sinusitis worsens with change in position, especially on bending, on straining, the headache increases. Myalgias, body aches. Pain exacerbates on percussion of the sinuses, on straining, on bending. So, acute sinusitis is basically infection of the sinuses. We have frontal sinuses, we have maxillary sinuses, we have ethmoidal sinuses. Whenever there is frontal sinusitis, the pain will be above the eyebrows over here. Whenever there is maxillary sinusitis, the pain will be in the cheek. And whenever there is ethmoidal sinusitis, majority of the pain will be seen in the bridge of the nose. So, uh, there is a diffuse facial pain in acute sinusitis cases and it is majority of the time due to the inflammation of these sinuses by viruses, by bacteria. Now, coming to the diagnosis of acute sinusitis. Diagnosis of acute sinusitis is majority of the times clinical. You do not need any tests to perform. You do not need imaging. You do not need any specific tests to confirm the diagnosis. But imaging or tests are required if there are red flags. If red flags are present in acute sinusitis, in those cases, you need to go for imaging. Investigations are only needed in the presence of red flags. What are the red flags? Red flags include focal neurological deficit. Now, remember, as I uh, we talked in the cerebral abscess video that the uh, uh, venous drainage of the face and the head goes into the brain. Now, whenever there is infection in the brain, in any part of the either ear, either mouth or nose, then infection can drain to the brain and it can result in infection of the brain tissue. That can present as focal neurological deficit. If there is focal neurological deficit associated with acute sinusitis, you need to go for investigation. If there is severe headache, Normally, headache is there in acute sinusitis cases, but that is not very severe. If there is ex severely excruciating headache in the patient, you need to go for imaging. Altered mental status, facial edema, ophthalmologic complications. If there is, you suspect orbital cellulitis, swelling of the eye, inflammation of the eye, it means that the infection is now spreading. It is getting out of the sinuses and it is spreading towards the brain. In such situation, imaging is needed. Otherwise, it's a clinical diagnosis. You do not need any imaging to confirm the diagnosis. CT of maxillofacial with or without contrast is done. Now, look, these are the maxillary sinuses. This is a normal maxillary sinus. There is no inflammation present in this one. And look, 
This is the inflamed, inflamed mucosa present in the maxillary sinus. You can easily appreciate, you can differentiate it with the normal. This is the normal one. This is the inflamed mucosa in the CT of sinus. This is another picture showing another sinus. You can appreciate this is a normal sinus which is clean, which is clear, which is black, filled with air. This side, this side is inflamed. This side is having secretions. It is plugged, it is blocked with secretions. This is the inflammation. Same goes over here. This is normal and this one is plugged with mucus, plugged with inflammation. X-ray of the sinuses are no longer recommended. In the past, when CT scan facilities were not available, X-rays were performed. X-rays in occipital mental uh, view called as water's view were performed to see the sinuses. Now look, these are the frontal sinuses and these are the maxillary sinuses. No, these frontal sinuses are clear, they are empty, but on the on this side, on left side, the maxillary sinus is hazy. It means that it is plugged with mucus, it is inflamed. X-ray of the sinuses no longer recommended. Now coming to the treatment of acute sinusitis. Remember, acute sinusitis is a self-limiting condition. It does not need antibiotics, it just needs supportive care. Even if it is a bacterial cause, it can get better with, it can completely resolve without antibiotics, just with supportive care. So it is a self-limiting condition. Acute rhinosinusitis is most commonly caused by viruses and they are self-resolving. If it lasts less than 10 days, all you just need is to give supportive care to these patients. It's most commonly viral and if it is lasting for more than 10 days, if it lasts for more than 10 days and you have given the supportive care but still the patient's symptoms are not getting better, it means that there is bacterial superinfection. As I said that these patients get viral flu, viral sinusitis and that gets better in few days but after that they get worsening of the symptoms. There is double worsening of the symptoms. And the uh, clear nasal discharge became purulent, thick, greenish discharge, a foul smelly discharge. It means that there is bacterial superinfection. You give a supportive care to that patient that you suspected had a viral uh, sinusitis. But now 10 days have passed. You gave the patient supportive care. That patient is not getting better. That is a case of bacterial sinusitis. And in that patient, you may consider giving antibiotics. Now, what is the supportive care that you need to give in a patient with acute sinusitis? In, a, in supportive care, there is facial pain. You need to give analgesic. Sinusitis is associated with fever. You need to give antipyretic. So, the amazing drug is acetaminophen. Acetaminophen or paracetamol can control fever. It can control pain. Other things that you can use is ibuprofen, naproxen. Acetaminophen is preferred. Intranasal glucocorticoid spray, topical steroids can be used in acute sinusitis as a symptomatic care and they can reduce inflammation in the nasal sinuses and nasal mucosa. Topical fluticasone, propionate, momitasone, triamcinolone in intranasal glucocorticoid sprays can be used. Intranasal saline spray. This saline spray basically break down the mucus. They uh, uh, break down the thick mucus and drain the mucus out, clear the passages. And they also moisten the dry airways. They also pro, um, uh, provide moisture to the dry airways due to the flu. Intranasal decongestant sprays. Basically, these uh, sprays contain agents like oxymetazoline and they uh, constrict the vessels and they reduce secretions. So, they decongest. There is congestion due to excessive secretions. And these, these decongestants, basically, they vasoconstrict the vessels and they reduce uh, production of secretions. But remember, these should not be used for more than three days. If they are used for more than three days, since they cause vasoconstriction, after three days, they can cause a rebound congestion. That is called as rhinitis medicomentosa. Rhinitis due to excessive medication. This is the medication responsible for causing rhinitis medicomentosa rebound congestion. So it should not be used for more than three days because if it is used for more than three days, patient can develop rebound congestion. So if the patient is using it for more than three days, the first thing you can do is to stop the oxymetazoline because it can worsen, it can cause rebound congestion. It can be used for less than three days. Now coming to oral decongestants. Oral decongestants uh, include pseudoephedrine or phenylephrine. These are only used when you suspect that there is osteochian tube involvement. 
now the classical scenario would be or the patient would come to you patient had flu but now the patient is saying that i am having severe pain in my ear and i cannot hear from this ear or i am having severe heaviness in my ear it means that the ostician tube is now blocked and that ostician tube is uh, uh, congested and for to relieve that congestion you can give oral decongestant so it is only used in patients with ostician tube dysfunction and it works really well oral antihistamines can also be used basically not all these drugs are to be prescribed you do not over prescribe or overload the patient with all these medications i am just telling you all the options that you have most of the cases do not even need uh, any treatment they resolve all by themselves these are just the treatment options that i am telling you so that you have these in mind in which you can pick any one or two and you can try you can relieve the patient's pain but all of them are not to be prescribed to the patients oral antihistamines can also be prescribed first generation include clemestine diphenhydramine first generation has the side effect that it causes drowsiness they cause sleep sedation and they even cause dry mouth because they have uh, anticholinergic effect with them as well second generation are preferably better than uh, the first generation in the sense that they do not cause sedation they do not cause uh, dry mouth or any anticholinergic side effects fexofenadine loratadine cetrazine Another thing that can be performed in supportive care in patients with acute sinusitis is nasal saline irrigation. What you do in nasal saline irrigation, you irrigate the nasal cavity with saline and you clean the nasal cavity. The, the good thing about this is that if you have prescribed intranasal drugs like intranasal glucocorticoids and if the patient has a, a nasal cavity that is filled with mucus, those intranasal glucocorticoids won't work. that patient will have congested nose even if you give intranasal glucocorticoids those intranasal glucocorticoids or decongestant won't work because the nasal cavity is stuffed with mucus so what you do is that you ask the patient to do nasal saline irrigation wash the nasal cavity with nasal saline and then use nasal sprays because then when the nasal cavity is empty nasal cavity is clean when the nasal uh, cavity membrane is uh, not having any layers of mucus on it only then glucocorticoids and uh, decongestant can get absorbed in the nasal cavity now how to perform nasal saline irrigation normally these nasal saline irrigation uh, formulas are present in the market that patient can directly use and irrigate the nasal cavity or you can prepare it at home as well what you do is that you ask the patient to take bottled water not tap water and boil that uh, bottled water then add 1 uh, and a half teaspoon of salt preferably pickling or canning salt is preferred over the table salt then add 1 uh, teaspoon of sodium bicarb in it and that is that water is uh, sterilized first by heating and then it is brought to the room temperature that is the sterile solution that patient can use for almost one week what then then that patient takes a 30 cc syringe and that patient uh, use uh, fills that 30 cc syringe with this solution then what the patient does is they take the syringe and they inject the fluid on one side of the nostril and the aim should be the back of the head not the top of the head the aim of the syringe should be the back of the head not the top of the head and they inject the whole solution into the nose what happens is that this solution enters from this side of the nose and it comes out from the other side and you wash the nose till the time the solution is clear remember that solution that you have prepared do not put this syringe back into that solution that's why i was saying that you take a big syringe like 30 cc syringe so that once you use it once for nasal cleaning you discharge uh, you discard that you cannot use the used syringe uh, syringe because the solution that you prepared was sterile and you will contaminate it if you reuse the syringe so a bigger syringe is preferred so that in one setting you can easily wash the whole nose normal saline can also be used and there are uh, formulations that are present in the market either in the form of sachets that contain these formulations or uh, already prepared solutions are also present that can be used now coming to acute bacterial sinusitis remember most cases of acute bacterial sinusitis they just need symptomatic care they do not need antibiotics 
antibiotics are not needed for acute bacterial sinusitis even even the acute bacterial sinusitis recovers itself it is self limiting the patients get better only some limited cases of uh, acute bacterial sinusitis need antibiotics in the patients in which you give the supportive care and the patient's condition is not getting better patient is having severe pain severe fever and the patient is not improving you give the supportive care you give the trial of supportive care for almost 7 8 days but the patient is not improving in that case you consider antibiotics what are the indications of antibiotics indications of antibiotics if the patient is not improving even after 10 days or after giving supportive care the onset of severe symptoms the new symptoms are there high fever greater than or equal to 39 degrees centigrade purulent nasal discharge facial pain severe facial pain for greater than or equal to 4 days no this patient is not getting better despite giving uh, all the supportive care you know that it's a bacterial infection in such patients you give antibiotics how do you tailor the antibiotic therapy what you do is that you you do not target staph aureus in this uh, in these patients because staph aureus is normally present in the nose we target strep pneumo in these patients because strep pneumo is an agent that can cause such severe symptoms first you see is the patient allergic to penicillin if the patient is not allergic to penicillin you can give amoxicillin 500 mg tds or 875 mg per orally twice daily or you can give combination preferably a combination of amoxicillin with clavulinate 500 to 125 mg three times daily or 875 125 per orally bd if the patient is allergic to penicillin in which in that case you cannot give amoxicillin in that case you can give doxycycline 100 mg bd or you have the option of third generation cephalosporins like cefixime 400 mg od cefpodoxime 200 mg bd now remember fluoroquinolones are not preferred drugs in acute sinusitis cases preferably use the drugs that i told you before fluoroquinolones fluoroquinolones are uh, the adverse effects of fluoroquinolones they outweigh the benefit so fluoroquinolones are only to be used when you have no other option fluoroquinolones levofloxacin moxifloxacin can be used macrolides clarithro azithro are not recommended due to increased resistance to strep pneumo antibiotic therapy is given for 5 to 7 days remember not all patients need very specific limited patients need antibiotic therapy before going into the summary if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button We talked about what is acute sinusitis, the causes of acute sinusitis, rhinitis, sinusitis symptoms, clinical diagnosis, no investigations needed unless red flags are present, CT scan, most commonly it is viral, supportive care is needed. In specific bacterial cases, you give antibiotics, oral analgesics, intranasal glucocorticoid sprays, saline sprays, decongestant sprays, oral decongestant, how to perform nasal irrigation, oral antihistamines, saline irrigation method. acute bacterial sinusitis resolves without antibiotics antibiotics indicated in very specific cases how to give antibiotic therapy if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on infectious medicine and emergency medicine the link of those videos are given in the description below thank you very much